Welcome back to another episode of FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. I'm Craig Haley, along with co-host Gary Reasons, who's in Idaho. We know now where Gary is this week for the FedEx Ground FCS National Awards. Gary, how you doing out there in Idaho? I tell you, Craig, it is an amazing place here in Idaho. I've had a, the greatest time. Uh, landed in Spokane, Washington, and drove down to uh, eastern part of the uh, Idaho and really it's just been a blast and it's way early in the morning here to do this podcast for you on Wednesday but uh, I'm getting re I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> well if our listeners are, are, are wondering we do tape on Wednesday mornings get it out you know uh, midday uh, so it, we are really up to date with, with what we're talking about and that includes Gary still in Idaho ready to travel back home after our podcast. Now, our producers of FCS Delivered are Seth Biley and Graham Bell. Uh, where can you find us? Well, obviously, you're uh, a lot of different podcast platforms. There's Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Google uh, Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and others. And of course, uh, you could be watching us on YouTube. Just search for our YouTube channel. Just search for FCS Delivered. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk about... Uh, review week two and all the results that went on. We're going to talk a little more about where's Gary this week for the FedEx Ground FCS Awards. And we'll also set up the week three ahead this weekend. Hey, Craig, you know, week two was a lot better. We, you know, the FCS effort, you know, really was out there in force. You know, you, you know we're going to start with, you know, the big game of the week. You know, we talked about this one and then Montana State, that team, really, they, they really put out the, an excellent effort against South Dakota State, and that was a tremendous ball game. I didn't get the early part of the game, but I think I caught the best part of the game. I caught the very end of the game, the last quarter, and that was where this thing came down to who was going to win this football game in, a, in the last quarter. And, Craig, it was an impressive effort uh, by South Dakota State and really came down to the very last play and, a, and, a, and a really an official's decision whether or not uh, – Montana State was going to win that game or not, and uh, it went the way of South Dakota State. You're right, Gary. It was the FedEx Ground uh, FCS game of the week. You know, top ranked South Dakota State came back from a ten nothing deficit to to beat number three uh, Montana State twenty to sixteen. The the play that you mentioned it was a, a Sean Chambers pass to Cleavon Thomas Jr. in in the back of the uh, South Dakota State end zone. Uh, South Montana State they originally. Uh, Ruled it a touchdown for the Bobcats. I thought live it looked like it wasn't a touchdown. And, and I think right. it seems like people out there kind of agreed it was the right call. But regardless, it was it was a great game, uh, high intensity. And, you know, in this kind of matchup, Gary, what do you think it means, you know, for the big picture when one versus three, you know, have a result like this? Yeah, you know, I'm out here in Idaho. And so I'm, I'm picking up a little bit of the Idaho vibes and also some of the Missouri Valley, big sky type of environment. And, you know, what it comes down to with those two football teams, Montana State, you know, as well as South Dakota State, that's the type of football that I think is, is superlative at the FCS level. And, you know, you, you're going to have teams that have built are built with structure and they are built with, with a, a purpose. Uh, they're, they're strong, they're physical, and they're dominant up front. And that's what really wins football games, believe it or not. It's not just throwing it around the yard all the time as we see a lot of it, but I think that those two teams are, you know, giving you an example of what some of the, the best FCS level of football is, and uh, they put it on display, and I was really impressed with the football game, and uh, it is a, an, a, a way to just kind of explain how Missouri Valley Conference, the Big Sky Conference, those two conferences really have an opportunity, I think, and they are separating themselves potentially from a lot of the teams in, in the FCS. Yeah, I, and you mentioned it, like, the teams that really get down to the end, you know, are, are in the mix for, for going to Frisco, Texas for a national championship game. They can really run the ball as much as pass it. And, you know, they're physical on both the offense and defensive line. So that's a great point there, Gary. And, and you know, big picture, South Dakota State does have an advantage over Montana State now as far as, you know, if, if it came down head to head, who's going to have a higher seed uh, with, with the playoff selection committee? Somebody had to win this game, obviously, and and but you know you don't really walk away too bad when it's a close game and it's you know another national power. And I think the immediate results we saw in in our uh, stats perform, you know FCS top twenty five poll this week, where 
Montana State did not drop at all uh, from this loss. It's still South Dakota State number one, North Dakota State uh, number two. They're both 2-0. and oh. Montana State stays at number three, and William & Mary is also uh, number four, just like it was through the preseason, through week one. So we definitely saw everybody's impressed by both teams here in a great matchup. Now, one of the other uh, big things about the, the weekend, uh, Gary, week two was we, fi we finally had some FCS over FBS wins. There were, there were three. It was South, uh, Southern Illinois versus uh, beat Northern Illinois. Your Idaho Vandals uh, beat Nevada handily, in fact. And, and, and Fordham uh, beat Buffalo, as you called it. I, I, I picked Idaho last week, but you picked Fordham. So <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell, you, tell me what impressed you about some of those FCS over FBS wins. Well, uh, congratulations to Fordham. You know, that was a that was something that, I, you know, I just kind of thought that they were going to have an opportunity, Craig, to, to get that win. They played well, uh, you know, up to that point. And then I thought that they had a chance to get a CJ, did a great job. Monte's had a great, great ball game. So he, uh, you know, was one of our award winners this week. But that was a, a fun team to watch. And that's that's a reason why you kind of look at these teams as, as, as a total and what they what they've done. You know, as I talk about them here in Idaho, they they, they basically mashed Nevada. That was a, a tremendous effort by by Jason X football team here in Idaho. They they took care of business. You know they won a, won one thirty three to six over Nevada, and you know it's it's a pretty good win. And you know they, we all know about Giovanni McCoy. He was our Jerry Rice Award winner a year ago, and he's back. He had a big game, and and so there's there there are teams that are out there that you know when you have this on your resume, you know you could possibly lose one two three games along along the road here. At the, at the FCS in the FCS level in your in your conference and all the competitiveness there is, but that FBS win that you have on your resume really looms large, I think, Craig, and it's really good for at least for these three teams, going to going to be into the postseason potentially to help them with uh, either a getting into the tournament or a or b positioning as uh, things end up here for this season. Sure, and you know obviously these teams uh, rose in the poll. I mean the the big one I think is. Idaho, they went from seven to five, uh, even got a first place vote. So you, you do see a difference uh, with, with the number of voters uh, looking to these teams when they have that kind of win. Now, I do have a question. I mean, all of us, from the media to, to the fans, you, you a former player, we, we all love when the FCS teams play the FBS teams. We love that opportunity. Now, somehow we don't seem to feel the other way when an FCS team plays a Division Two or Three or NAIA team plays down. So, can we really have it both ways? We want one way, but not the other. Well, not really, Craig. You know, you just have to look at the the, the body of work of, of all every team, and that's really upon the voters. You know, you and I are voters in the, in the uh, top twenty five poll, and you have to look at the big picture. And I think that most of our of our of our guys that are on this poll. Uh, and vote, they do take a look at that. They take it to heart. They understand what it is. So, you know, just like we talked about the top three teams at the poll uh, didn't move, you know, a little bit of a, you know, shake up there, but it did, it did, it didn't happen. So Montana state did not drop, you know, in that, in that football game. And there's, there's, there's no reason for, for them to drop because they have, you know, the, the makings of a tremendous FCS program. And, you know, I think that most people across the country who are voting, they took a, took took to look at that and they said, "Hey, this is where what it needs to be." And so I, I think we're doing a pretty decent job, Craig, across the country as of looking at the FCS pro, uh, teams and how they unfold and and really what's going to be meaningful in the big picture of uh, you know of FCS football. Well, one of the reasons I, I mentioned that is this week one of the power programs, the Montana Grizzlies. The New York Yankees of the FCS, as I always refer to them, they're playing a, a Division II team, but it's not just any Division II team. They're playing the two-time defending national champion, Ferris State. So it, it's probably a tougher game than, than they've seen so far. And, and Ferris State is going to Montana, but they've won 28 straight road games. So Montana does have an awful tough game here, even though they're playing down the Division II. Now, Ferris State, if I remember, the, the, their national championship games are, are down by you uh, in, in Texas. They, they, I believe they play that game in McKinney. Can you tell us about yeah. the, that stadium? Yeah, they do. They play in the McKinney ISD Stadium, and that is a brand-new $52 million stadium 
high school field. You know, it's a high school stadium. It's a multi-use complex uh, that is uh, was was built two years ago. I think it was two or three years ago was completed. And I tell you, it's it's a palace. So I went to one of the opening ball games there uh, as a fan. Myself, my wife, we we have uh, neighbors neighbors in our in our neighborhood who had kids playing. And so I, I, we went to the ball game, and it was amazing. The environment. It is like a college environment. In in Texas, we have some of the mega stadiums uh, that are out there in, in Texas high school football, and they're on display, and it's pretty it's pretty impressive. But the McKinney Stadium has has been host to uh, college uh, college bowl games. They have been host to uh, games like this that are that are that are tremendous, and that's where that the Division II championship game is played, and it's and it's a great home for it. It's just really close to where we play the FCS national championship game in Frisco. It's really just geographically, you're probably about 12 miles apart, believe it or not, the two stadiums. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really pretty close. So I can, go to, I can go to a championship game in the morning in, in Frisco, and I can go to another one uh, at, in McKinney uh, in the afternoon and uh, catch two great ball games at two great stadiums. I like how you use the word palace, because from, from a distance, when I see these high school stadiums, in Texas, that's that's the right word. It's like wow, it's it's amazing how how beautiful and, and and modern and big that they are. So, all right, one more point about our stats reform FCS top twenty five poll presented by FedEx Ground. Last week, Sanford was number eight, lost handily to Western Carolina in the Southern Conference opener, a game that we 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 looked at thirty to seven. It was a five hour plus. Uh, lightning delay uh, and, you know, inclement weather delay uh, from the second quarter on, uh, it came came about. Now, in this week's poll, there's 56 voters in, in, in our, in our uh, national poll. We wound up with Sanford number uh, 18, dropped 10 spots. Western Carolina moved up, but only to t basically 28, three spots outside the, the poll. Now, if you look at the coaches poll, there was a 24 spot difference afterwards where Sanford was 14 and, and uh, effectively Western Carolina was 38. So we were a little closer, but our poll, you know, I know I did. How did you make this differentiation between where to put Sanford and where to put Western Carolina off these early results? Yeah, Craig, I, I dropped Sanford down a little bit, uh, but I, you know, didn't really move them out. I thought, I think this is just a, a bump in the road for Sanford and Western Carolina. You know, they get, they need credence. They, 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 they had a great ball game, had an opportunity to win and they went over a ranked team, which is tremendous. Uh, I didn't have them ranked into the top 25 poll. They're right there outside of it for me. But uh, I think that, you know, moving forward, you know, they're, they're going to turn, turn some heads. And, you know, that's kind of the whole thing here of looking at this poll in a big picture of, you know, where do you see teams and how do you see them unfolding? And I think that uh, Western Carolina has that opportunity there. You know, it's it's pretty interesting just to come come back and win. But, uh, uh, you know, that's kind of how I had it. And, uh, Craig, where, where did you have Western Carolina and, uh, and Sanford? Yeah, I didn't I didn't have Western Carolina in my top 25. I had Sanford at 24. So I, I had them tight, but I, I kind of did what you're saying, like, kind of yeah. went on the pedigree of last year where Sanford went undefeated in the SOCON, certainly had a bad day here. I'm not saying Western Carolina can't eventually go past Sanford. I, I just feel like I'm not ready to just say Sanford should totally drop because, um, uh, you know, they do have a lot back from last year, especially Michael Hires, their quarterback. Certainly a bad day. Western Carolina is at Eastern K Kentucky this week. That's a huge game. If, if Western Carolina wins that, I'm sure they're going to be nationally ranked, but they're right there, you know, 28 uh, effectively in our, you know, three spots outside our top 25. So that was an interesting topic. People on social media brought it up this week, fans, and, and it's a valid point. I just wanted to see how you went about it. I know how I went about it. I think we were kind of in line with other voters in our, in our national poll, and we have 56 voters. So it's time right, to Gary, we're going to take a, a quick. <laughs> wow, what is that, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> this is Joe. Welcome to Joe, Idaho Vandal Joe. So we'll talk more about him in the next segment, but uh, got to get some coffee in. <laughs> You've gone full Idaho Vandals. <laughs> All right, Gary, we'll be right back with more FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Brown.
rehearsals for the school play were really coming along. Bigger smile, Mr. Squirrel. Until a custodian accidentally threw away the costumes. Oh no. Everyone was rattled. Miss Garrity forgot how to play. And the queen of the hedgehogs almost quit. Find a new queen. But replacement costumes were shipped with FedEx. And with added peace of mind from picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Welcome back to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. Now, our second segment each week is the FedEx Ground FCS National Players and Team of the Week uh, segment. We like to call it Where's Gary? As you know, he's in Moscow, Idaho this week with the Idaho Vandals. Now, each Monday, we have five national awards from the previous weekend's action. Our FedEx Ground FCS National Offensive Player of the Week, C.J. Montez, the quarterback of Fordham. He led that upset of Buffalo. He threw five touchdowns for the second straight game, in fact. So great week for C.J. Montez. Yeah, defensively, we're going to take a look at South Dakota. Defensive tackle Nick Gaze had a great game against St. Thomas, and that shutout that they had, he had three sacks in the ball game, seven total tackles, and you know uh, had a forced fumble as well. So had a great defensive effort there So to get that uh, that award this week. Our freshman of the week was John S. Davis, uh, running back for Arkansas Pine Bluff. It was a, in front of a big crowd against Tennessee uh, State. He just really set it on fire, 167 rushing yards, three catches for 46 yards. Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Pine Bluff lost this game, but just you can't deny the week that John S. Davis had as the freshman of the week. Yeah, had a great game. And, you know, we're, for, for the team of the week, Craig, Western Carolina, their win over Sanford, as we've talked about, was really special. You know, they took care of the football. They held the football 41 minutes time of possession. And I tell you, running back Desmond Desmond Reed, you know, he may be a budding star here in this in this uh, this this picture. So congratulations to Western Carolina, the, the uh, stats perform FedEx ground national team of the week. Yeah, and before we get into our special teams player of the week, just to tell you, this is uh, week three of the season. It's week seven of our podcast already, Gary. We started early. And after about three weeks, one of our producers, Graham Bell, he he looked into the numbers of where the most downloads were, were taking place for our weekly podcast. And he goes down the list and he stopped when he saw Moscow. And he did a double take. And I tell you what. Moscow, Idaho, when it doesn't say Idaho, uh, it really takes you back. I did the same thing when, when Graham Bell sent me the, the, the early results of downloads. You just see Moscow and you think twice about where that, what, what Moscow that is. <laughs> I'll let you take over now. Well, I tell you what, you know, it's been a really, really fun opportunity to be here. And, and we're taught, and we're here because we're actually presenting the FCS National. Uh, award to the special teams player of the week, and we we ha had a winner here. So at, at South Dakota, excuse me, at uh, University of Idaho, we had came down here and really had a great time. And Ricardo Chavez is our FCS special teams player of the week. It starts with my trip from Dallas Fort Worth. It goes to Denver. Boy, I tell you, then I go up to Spokane on our friends at Southwest and. Idaho is a big place, I tell you. It is a beautiful drive, but you get into Moscow and it is tremendous. The campus of Idaho is a university that is very, very picturesque. So many trees out there. The structure that this program has is built upon having a great environment. And that's exactly what these, these students enjoy there together because it is a, is a good thing that Jason Eck, the head football coach, really has kind of put put in place there and they are winning football games. It is a traditional universe, university and it is really beautiful. You can see how, why that there's uh, students are drawn to this place as well as student athletes. And it's a tremendous facility. They have redone everything. This is the Kibbe Dome, which is where they play the home stadium. You know, it seats about 15,000 people, but it can get really, really loud. They've got a basketball facility that's brand new. It's the best basketball stadium in the country. And the football team had, can play indoors or outdoors. It's tremendous around campus, Craig. And I really enjoyed being there. And I have to, you know, say a, a shout out to Jared Wolcott, the defense, the, the uh, associate athletic director for uh, Idaho, who took me around and really shared with all of his knowledge about it. 
and had a chance to visit with many members of the football team. Very gracious for them to host us here. We did present the award in a team setting inside. And, uh, you know, these guys really took what I said to heart. And I, I think that a lot of these, these young men are really kind of looking up. I look at I look at this Idaho program on a football level, correct, that it is one of these these programs that is going to be on the rise and you're going to see a lot more things from them. Last week, what they did against Nevada was not a, uh, a fluke. So here I'm pre pre presenting the, the trophy uh, for the player of the week to Chavez there. He is actually a kicker and a punter and he kicks field goals right footed and he punts left footed. Check that out. He kicks right footed with field goals and he punt left footed. That's amazing. I talked to him a little bit about that and then I wrapped it all up. This is the coaches show with Jason Eck and their team last, last night and it was a lot of fun to go out there and be a part of that show as well. So our FCS National Awards on campus really was a was a tremendous success and I've got a few little, little bit of swag here now and I've got some stuff that uh, you know wherever I go next week I don't know how they're going to top here what uh, what was put together by Jarek. So it was a uh, so far it's it's kind of been pretty good. Went to Morgan State last week was had a great time there. But uh, you know some of the stuff here that, uh, that that they're doing with with Idaho it's just a treasure. It's just fun to be around and you hear the excitement in my voice. You know it's really fun for me to be a part of of this and bringing some some uh, prominence to FCS football and really kind of sharing some of my experiences with these student athletes and trying to make a you know brighter shine a brighter spotlight on FCS football and uh, this Idaho program. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, R Ricardo Chavez in, in winning uh, the FedEx Ground FCS National Special Teams uh, Player of the Week, he was perfect with his right foot, 15 points on four field goals, uh, three. PATs. His left foot, he had two punts, 60 and 70 yards. So he really just put his feet into this up uh, victory over uh, uh, Nevada. Impressive. And what a storyline that he could do this with two different feet. I, it's just amazing, Gary. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. It's good, good, good to talk to them about it. They nicknamed him RC1, you know, Ricardo Chavez 1. That's his football jersey number. So pretty easy to, to, to talk to him. And I, he's just absorbing the whole program, the whole thing here, and uh, it's it's impressive to watch. Sure. H have you sensed that there's growing buzz about your on-campus vi uh, visits? Yeah, I think so. And there's a you know, Idaho went out of their way to really make my visit special, uh, and I think that that was uh, is apparent. And what you know, when you realize what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. We're into week two here. Went to Morgan State, had a great visit in Baltimore last week, and I think it's kind of growing the inertia of this. Uh, getting the student athletes involved is really what we're looking to do and have them and their families and their parents and all the FCS fans out there just kind of participate. We've got all these platforms out there with our YouTube channel, with our online stuff at, at, at the analyst, as well as you know Instagram, Twitter. There's there's different ways to get involved with what we're doing, and our, our team behind the scenes is doing a great job. Graham Bell, our editor, and and uh, also Seth Biley here with our producer for the FCS podcast, our, our uh, FCS delivered podcast. It's pretty cool with how we're pulling all of this together, Craig. And I'm very very pleased to do it. And we're just getting started, just two weeks into this. Sure. I, it's just tremendous to see, you know, the travel that you're doing and, and the reception these campuses have towards you. All right, Gary, we're going to go to our final break uh, and come back with FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. We will look at week three in the next segment. When someone accidentally threw away the school play costumes... Oh, no. Replacements were shipped with FedEx. And with picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Do you like what you're hearing on FCS Delivered today? For more national FCS coverage, please go to theanalyst.com throughout the week. We're the home for the FCS Top 25 Media Poll and the weekly and season-ending FCS National Awards, presented by FedEx Ground. We also take you across FCS Nation with stories, predictions, and an inside look. The FCS coverage can be found at theanalyst.com.
Welcome back to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. This is our final segment, Gary Reasons and I, Craig Haley. We are going to look at week three. A lot of these teams are, are playing their final non-conference game of the season. I guess they should be settled in, right, Gary? Well, most of these teams are, are prepared. You know, they, when you play non-conference games, you know, those are kind of the tune-up games. But uh, you want to get those out of the way, and hopefully you're on the right end of those games, you know, hopefully for, for your end-of-season nods. But, uh, you know, there some some teams have the ability to play two, three, you know, non-conference games, then get into conference play. But it's right here upon us, Greg. You are right, Gary. I, You know, we talk about teams finishing up non-conference, but there's also a league that's about to play its first week of the season. Obviously, the Ivy League starts a little bit later than everybody else. They play 10 straight weeks without a break from here on. Uh, all eight teams are in action, of course. Yale's playing the big one. They're at uh, sixth-ranked Holy Cross. They've split the last two years. Princeton's in another big game at uh, San Diego. Penn is at Colgate. Those are probably the headliners for the first week of the Ivy League season. And then also, you know, speaking non-conference, I think it's kind of cool. There are three non-conference matchups this week, Gary, that are over 90 meetings they've had. And to have that that kind of rivalries going on this early in the season says a lot. There's uh, Southern Illinois is at uh, Southeast Missouri. It's the war for the wheel. They're playing for the 91st time. Hampton and Howard, the uh, battle of the real HU. They're playing for the 98th time. And then also Illinois State's at Eastern Illinois. It's the Mid-America Classic, the 111th time they're playing. How cool is it to have these rivalries so early in the season? Yeah, these are a lot of fun ball games. And you're talking, you just only picked three that were over 90, but there's a lot of other games that are out there that are rivalry games that are against non-traditional opponents uh, for you. And it's pretty cool to have these things. You know, I know my, my university, Northwestern State, they're playing Stephen F. Austin University, and that's going to be a fun ball game to be at, to be there. And I'm going to have a chance to go out and see that one because I'm going to call that game for, for Northwestern State this week. So that's kind of the things that were out there. You know, you have these different rivalries. Teams may migrate away from the different conferences and things, but still some of these important games that they have on their calendars every year are the ones that some of the alumni look to, and those are the ones that they want to attend. Yeah, that's a great point. When when they, you know, teams might have been in the schools may have been in the same conferences and then they go different directions to keep these close rivalries together. That's very important for all of college football, not just the FCS. Yes, okay. opportunities against the FBS. I think there's been 80 total already, so 20 more. There's seven within the uh, the the uh, top 25. Starts with uh, Idaho, number five's at Cal. Uh, Sac State, Sacramento State is at Stanford. They're playing Troy Taylor, Sac State. That was Troy been their coach until this year, who's now at Stanford. That's kind of a cool meeting. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good, impressive, impressive ball game there. So you know we're going to go through some of these rapid fire picks, Craig. You know you're talking about these ball games. You know it's one of these these games that can be you can pick one and you really don't don't really know. So Holy Cross and Yale, what do you think? <laughs> I think it could go either way. I think uh, Holy Cross has to be able to come across the emotions of a tough loss to, to BC, Boston College, to be able to handle Yale because Yale is the team to beat in the Ivy League. How about you? Yeah, I think that Yale is definitely uh, going to be there when it comes all said and done and take care of business. And you know, let's take a look at Central Arkansas and North Dakota State. You know, what, what's going to go on there? That, that's going to be a heck of a ball game. And uh, it's going to be, you know, talk about the quarterback play there. You know a little bit about Cam Miller and Cole Payton, what they're doing there. I, I love how they've made this rotation work. I, I had my doubts going into the year. I mean, you can't really doubt the Bison, but they seem to be making it work, uh, getting it done, passing and ru running the ball. So that's interesting. Now, this particular game, they played it once already, 2019. Uh, it was kind of the Trey Lance showcase game for NFL scouts. Excuse me, 2020. It was the fall of 2020, the COVID season. It's all... The, the Bison played that fall. They wanted to, uh, you know, showcase Trey Lance for the draft. And guess what? It turned into a great game. It was 39-28. North Dakota State had to rally. So I think it's a great matchup. I'm going to go the Bison. Who are you going with? No, I'm going to go with the Bison as well. It, it's going to be one of those teams that I think it's just they're big, they're strong, they're physical. They're going to overtake uh, Central Arkansas, although that uh, the defense there of Central Arkansas may have something to say about it in the end. 
Another one of the big games this week, we, we talked about it earlier, is, is Western Carolina is at Eastern uh, Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky has played some FBS opponents, so, you know, the record may not show, but they're, they're a top 25 caliber team they were in the preseason. Parker McKinney, uh, you know, he went over 10,000 passing yards last week in their loss, but I, you know, I, I think the Sanford win for Western Carolina was probably the biggest of, of Kerwin Bell's uh, three seasons with, with the Catamounts. I'm going to go the Catamounts, but this is another kind of close pick em game, Gary. Yeah, I think Eastern Kentucky, though, Craig, I think they're going to get, get, you get on the right side of this one, get the first W in the column there with Parker doing a good job and, and leading that team to victory. So I'll take, uh, I'll take Eastern Kentucky in that one. So now, you know, let's take a look at, uh, you know, UIW. They're one and one. You know, they 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 didn't get that. To, they got their first win a, a week ago, and then at, they're going to be at Eastern Kentucky. Uh, you know, let's take a look at uh, who I, at Abilene Christian. Up there. Yeah, that's right. They're going to be at Abilene Christian. You know, Abilene Christian. That's a team that uh, going to be physical in that football game. And UIW, their quarterback, who's new in there this year, Zach. Uh, Calzada, he's been a really solid add to the football team, and I think that's really given them stability on offense. I think that's going to be a fun ball game to watch, and this could be a, a tough one because Abilene Christian is ready to play. Who are you picking? I, I'm, I'm probably going to lean on Abilene Christian at home. Uh, UIW, I don't think is completely settled yet. I think they're still learning about who they're going to be, and I think that uh, Abilene Christian is uh, is going to win this one. I'm going to agree. I think it's it's an upset waiting to happen. I mean, Abilene Christian, they're they're physical. They're on their line, uh, running the ball, their backs. Uh, you know, UIW, you mentioned their team speed. They're like kind of a finesse team. I, I agree. I think this is an upset waiting to happen. I'm going Abilene Christian. Now, our FedEx Ground FCS game of the week. We talked about it a little bit. It's a rivalry game, uh, the war for the wheel. Uh, it is... 15th ranked Southern Illinois at 13th ranked Southeast Missouri. I tell you, there's a great story behind the war for the wheel. This series 91st meeting, Gary, way back when the series started uh, the early years, the visiting team used to travel by boat across the Mississippi River so to play this game. So they have a ceremonial wheel trophy to the winner now. That is one of the best trophies, I think, and stories in all of college football, Gary. Yeah, I, I love the trophy aspect in college football. There's there's a lot of those out there. And, uh, you know, I was telling you about the game this weekend. Stephen F. Austin, Northwestern State, they're, they're playing. You know, it's, they don't play for it anymore, but it used to be played for Chief Caddo, the big seven-foot-tall uh, wooden sculpted uh, uh, Native American. So that was that was one to, to look at. But, you know, this game has all the makings of, of a fun ball game, Southern Illinois, Southeast Missouri. Uh, you know, quarterback Paxton Gillard, you know, he's got a strong cast of characters there. And I think the Southeast Missouri with with Geno Hess, he's a stud. So I think the Southeast Missouri, Craig, in this one, is going to get the going to get the, the the right side of the of the, the win column here for for Southeast Missouri. Well, we call this a pick 'em segment because I tell you what, you could pick either way and feel confident or not confident because these are tight games. I'm going to go to the Salukis. Their defense has been great. They're on the road here. Uh, lost last year 34-31 to Southeast Missouri. I, again, this could go either way. I'm going to go Salukis. Uh, just we need difference, right? <laughs> I need some All right, more now. <laughs> Last week, we both picked winners for one. We had one choice for FCS over FBS. You took Idaho beating Nevada, and it was a blowout. Um, excuse me, I took Idaho over uh, Nevada. You took Fordham, which totally impressed me uh, against Buffalo. Who are you picking this week for an upset? I kind of like the guys where I'm at here. So Idaho is, is really on the rise, and I think that – uh, Jason Eck has a pretty good opportunity to take this football team to the state of California, which is going to be a pretty good plane ride. And I, I kind of like the Vandals. You know, the Vandals are getting on the right side of things. And you know what? I'm going to go all in on Idaho, and I'm going to say that they're going to have an opportunity to win against Cal. That's going to be a monumental win here for Idaho. <laughs> a former FBS team now playing back at the FCS level in Idaho, but I'm all in on these guys. So you see my little – well, it's over this other shoulder here, the, 
little, little banner. Uh, there it is right up there. Okay, so I'm all in here on the Idaho Vandals going against uh, Cal and, uh, and getting that, that upset. That would be something. Two F FBS wins in one season. It's very possible. It's a great pick, Idaho Vandals. I tell you, the last time it happened for an FCS team, it was the same conference, Big Sky. Portland State in 2015 had two FBS wins under Coach Bruce Barnum. So that would be impressive if they get it done. I'm, I'm going to go uh, Villanova over UCF. Uh, I would like to see UCF maybe, you know, that, that's that's a better team than, than I usually pick against, a better program. But I think the uh, Villanova Wildcats have been so impressive. You know, this would be a big step up from who they played already, but th that's going to be my pick. Wow. I tell you, when these wins happen, it just it galvanizes the whole FCS level. Everybody loves to see it. it, it it's that community feel that we talked about. So we'll see. You, you have Idaho it again. It, I, I have Villanova. Fun. I got to get some <laughs> breakfast, Craig. I, you know, I've got I've got some energy here uh, courtesy of Idaho. So I've got the Vandal Bar. So you know, I'm, I'm not doing any marketing or advertising here. But this is, you know, got to got to have my breakfast, right? Reggie Jackson has nothing on the Idaho Vandals. That's for sure. <laughs> well, that brings a, a close to our uh, episode of FCS Delivered presented by FedEx Ground. We thank FedEx Ground for making this happen. Also, st Stats Perform. Seth Biley and Graham Bell are producers. They do yeoman's work with, with our episodes. And tell you, Gary, as we mentioned, a lot of tight games here for week three. I think we better be ready for some more great action. Yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. It's going to be fun. I'm going to go down to call a ball game here leaving Idaho got to get back to get back to Texas and on to Louisiana so Gary's a traveling guy Craig and it's uh, I, I really enjoy this time of year <laughs> tremendous Gary all right well thanks again for tuning in this has been another episode of FCS delivered presented by FedEx Ground